Gene. And now I will record again. Okay. So welcome back. Uh, for those of you watching, this is this is a second. Uh, no, Gene, we, we cannot hear you. We can only hear the... Oh, I'm hearing myself because this darn thing. Okay. Uh, Gene is your guy, right? Gene yeah. is our guy. Yep. All right. So I need to make him important, right? Yep. There we go. So he's going to get kicked out and then come back in. So this is where it gets real interesting live on YouTube, right? All right done. Gene, Look at this. Gene, if, if I do this, I can see you just fine. There you go. <laughs> All right. So, Gene, you are on mute. I'm going to hit the unmute button. Um, so, so there's a mute button that you can see. It's on the bottom left. Mm -hmm. of the uh, zoom screen uh okay. when you're when you're not talking feel free to just uh unmute yeah, yourself I can, just, I can just hit this on my headset perfect yeah and then i just want to make sure we we don't have too much cross noise from all the different uh microphones here <laughs> so welcome back everyone this is part two of the malware bytes webinar and this part we're talking about the malware bytes tech bench and the malware bytes tool set um so, so we already did introductions earlier for Alex and Michael Sherwood, but since this is a new webinar, I'm going to have you guys do introductions again, and we're also right. going to do an introduction for Gene. So if we could, if we could start uh, this time with Alex. You're muted, Alex. There yeah, you. oh, sorry. Yeah, I had to hit the button first. That would help, wouldn't it? Uh, so, uh, yes. Thank you, uh, Steve, for putting this together, and thanks for having us. Uh, we... We love this webinar. We love the webinar we did before, and we're really excited to talk about uh, our TechBench uh, offering and the tool set. So we'll get mo more into that here in a few moments, but uh, just a kind of an introduction of myself. My name, again, Alex Smith. Uh, I work at Malwarebytes as a technical product manager for technician services. So that's kind of a fancy way of saying that uh, I help make product and services uh, come to life uh, that affect technicians and tech shops. Um, so one of the things, or two of the things we're going to talk about today, the tech bench program and the tool set are things that I help uh, bring to life uh, by working with engineers and other teams at Malwarebytes to make the uh, the magic happen. Um, I've been at Malwarebytes for about a year and a half now. Uh, and before that, I came from uh, directly from the computer repair industry from a uh, large company whose name I'm not going to mention right now, but let's just say I was there for almost 16 years. I did uh, seven and a half years doing technical training um, to their technical support staff, uh, specifically around the Windows operating system, Windows repair, malware removal, and using their internal uh, tool set. Uh, so definitely taking some of those uh, those learnings and that skill set and bringing it into Malwarebytes, as well as having many, many, many years of actual computer repair experience itself, uh, doing OS repair, doing break fix work, doing malware removal. So uh, I've been doing this type of stuff for almost 20 years. Uh, basically my entire life. I absolutely love it. And I love that now I'm kind of bringing some uh, some of my skills and some of my learnings into making some awesome products that uh, technicians and tech shops can use. So that's a little bit about me. And uh, we're going to let uh, Mr. Michael Sherwood introduce himself real quick. And then after that, we'll have Gene uh, introduce himself. And then we'll hand things back over to Sherwood to kind of talk more about TechBench. Cool. I actually just noticed my name is Chirpa uh, on the screen. So for all you geeks out there, you're going to have to look that up. Uh, I'm at our uh, home office here in Santa Clara, California, and it's uh, completely decked out in Star Wars. Uh, and some of our other satellite offices are Star Trek. So it's a pretty cool place to work. Uh, so I'm Michael Sherwood. I lead the team that Alex was mentioning, which is the technician services team here at Malwarebytes. And really, we have one mission, and that's to serve all of you uh, that are serving your clients. Sometimes it's in the form of a you know, great opportunity to use some of our software, or maybe sometimes it's an opportunity to resell some Malwarebytes to your clients. But in the, in the quick version, we're here to serve all of you and make sure you have everything you need from Malwarebytes and, uh, and our company. So as Alex mentioned, you know, we've worked together for, for many, many years. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to be in the computer repair industry for a little over 20 years professionally, both in the United States Air Force, uh, as well as the private sector. So 
hopefully I understand what all of you are going through on a daily basis, you know, whether it's dealing with that random client that's got that old XP machine that just won't upgrade, or maybe they've got Vista and they just love it uh, for some random reason, uh, or maybe they're like Alex and they're using the latest and greatest Windows 10 and they probably shouldn't be on their production machine. But uh, long story short, I, I love this industry and I love serving technicians. So thanks for the opportunity for us to, to chat with you. And I'll, I'll kick it over to one of our awesome partners, Gene, who is out on the East Coast. Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, my name is Gene. I uh, work for a company called Computer Specialist out of South Jersey. Um, we've been in business about seven years. I've uh, been in the industry about 12, 13 years. Um, I brought experience from setting pharma conventions up and stuff like that, uh, traveling all over the place to uh, a local shop. And uh, repairs can be quite different than working with bleeding edge technologies. Customers come in all shapes and sizes. Um, we recently partnered with Malwarebytes and they have a great product uh, that we've been real appreciative of. And uh, hopefully it can help you guys out too. Uh, let's see what they have to say about it. Cool, Alex, you're gonna be my PowerPoint driver today. <clears throat> you're on oh, mute. So nice. but I, 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 so nice, I got the, the big job, the important one. You do. So. TechBench, uh, the real, real quick version of what TechBench is, it's a, a comprehensive program for, uh, for you. And as we get into some of the core components today, we'll, we'll cover what does it actually mean to your business? How can we help grow your bottom line? What tools and solutions are we putting together that work right now today? What are some you know, future stuff that, you know, that we have planned? We'll also have Gene uh, jump in and, and share really how, how have they made it come to life and, and quite frankly, how have they impacted their bottom line and more importantly, the satisfaction of, of their clients. Uh, hit next, Alex. So before uh, we jump into uh, some of the details, I wanted to share with you, we're, we're a really small team here at Malwarebytes. As you can see, it's Alex and myself. Uh, we also have Cecile. She's really the glue that holds our team together, making sure that we get, <laughs> get all of our stuff done, to be completely frank. Uh, she also leads our forums, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And then we have Sammy. He's a longtime Malwarebytes employee, you know, been here seven plus years. And he's really going to be your guy to help understand what solutions you need, whether it's a one-off solution, you know, you need Malwarebytes for, you know, the, the client down the street, or maybe you need 100, 100 units for, uh, for a business that you're working on. And then the two guys that make all the magic, uh, the engineers, Michael Winziger and Jacob Gilbo, uh, both fantastic guys that uh, love hearing all of the bugs in the software that they make uh, come to life when you're using it. So that's our small team. Uh, and we're here to really serve all of you. Uh, next, Alex. So we like slides without any words because uh, it's better just to have a conversation with you. So really the whole reason we're here, as, as I mentioned, is to, to serve all of you. So if you, you go back to the roots of, of Malwarebytes, Malwarebytes was founded by Marcin, you know, our, our, our longtime CEO, just a fabulous, fabulous guy. He's, he's, he's a technician like all of us. And uh, what's funny is the whole reason Malwarebytes started is he broke his computer uh, and he actually couldn't afford uh, some services at the time, which I may or may not have been leading that organization at the time, uh, which is how we met. Uh, and he said, you know, I'm going to create some better solutions. And it, it started out really small, making some utilities. And that really, you know, led the initial kind of onslaught of what you see as Malwarebytes version one. And during that time, some great tools were made. And then next came along their business products. They made some great tools for technicians. And as they got deeper into it, the technician kind of took a back burner. And so Marcin reached out and said, hey, you're doing some great stuff with the technician world. Do you, uh, you wanna come over and join us? So myself and then Alex and some others uh, said, yeah, we really wanna take what we've learned in the industry and apply it here at Malwarebytes and really make some dedicated solutions. Not only you've got folks like us that you can reach out to, but you've got some software and then you've got other solutions that are actually designed for technicians by technicians. Um, so think of like portable scanners, think of reseller experiences that are easy, all of that stuff that you see uh, really go through Alex or myself to make sure that uh, before it ends up uh, in front of you, we know it's a solution that's gonna work for you. So that's the whole reason we're here. So we spent the last year or so really retooling a lot of the things that we offer here. And we'll get into kind of what those details are here in a second, but just know if there's, if there's something that just doesn't sound right or you're, you're not comfortable with a, uh, a solution or a product that we're putting together, just ping Alex or I, and we'll, we'll either answer it and tell you, yep, that's, that's what's happening, or we'll say, you know what, we really messed up on that and uh, we'd love to co-create a, a new solution with you. Alex, you wanna hit next? All right, so TechBench. 
So a traditional reseller program or maybe a traditional toolkit that a company is putting together is, is interesting. It's a great offering. And usually those offerings are, are kind of separated. There's a couple of companies out there that are, that are combining them together. But for the most part, all of these things are separate things that you see on the screen. And what we've said is we really want to put all of these together in one easy to use package for you. So you kind of get the most bang for your buck out of us. And quite frankly, you can use that to, to maximize the profits on your side. So we'll start at the top one, the reseller experience. This one's super easy and super straightforward. We want to make it easy for you to purchase Malwarebytes as well as at an incredibly attractive discount so that you can uh, make those good margins with, with your clients. And we'll get into a little bit of what the costs and the pricings are a little bit later, but we wanted to make that reseller experience as frictionless as possible. So there's no questions on how much does three seats cost or 14 seats or 122 seats. We make it super easy for you to pop in, pop out. You can talk to Sammy. Or you can just self-serve yourself. The second one you see on the screen is the Malwarebytes tool set. And you see the word portable there. Portable means it's written for a technician. I know the days are long gone where you take a product, you download it, you install it, you update it, you scan it, you run it. Why not just open it and run it? Um, that's what the tool set is designed to do. And as you can see in some of the demos that Alex will go through today is we've got a couple really cool quick hits that let you know kind of what's up with the machine and then you make the determination what to do. We also have some malware scanning, some window scanning. And as you get further down the line with us, you'll start to see a lot of our technologies that we've acquired, whether it's JRT, ADW Cleaner, their next modern versions within Malwarebytes usually show up first with inside of that tool set. And you'll see something really cool from us in the next two months or so. Dedicated community. This is no more than a glorified forum where you can hang out, talk shop with your partners, maybe talk to Gene, maybe learn a new solution, or learn about the latest and greatest stuff uh, from our organization. Alpha programs. This one I get really excited about. This is all the cutting edge stuff that we're working on. As I just mentioned, when we acquired JRT and ADW Cleaner, those were kind of similar things from, from an outsider's perspective. What we first did is we worked with the technical community, those in the TechMinch program. We said, how do you want these two products to kind of come together? We co-designed it, we wrote it, and then we actually released it to that community 45 days before we published it publicly. And now what you see today where there is no longer a need for JRT to be used if you're using ADW Cleaner, all of that was a direct output of our technician and our community saying, we need this solution and we need it now. Uh, and we were, get, we were able to get that turned around really quickly after that request. So everything you see on the screen today is what we call the advanced tier of TechBench. We're not trying to have 14 or 15 different tiers where you can kind of come in and do it. Our, our solution is simple. We have a basic tier, or if you just want to resell some stuff, you can do that. You don't get really any of the extra cool stuff. If you want all this other cool stuff, we have an advanced tier. And we'll talk about what the pricing is on that and how it's actually a win for us, a win for you, and then actually another win for you when you sign up for the TechBench program. Next. All right. Before we jump into the tool set, which is going to be Alex, uh, I want to pause and have Gene kind of jump in and give his initial thoughts on just kind of the program and what he's thinking about it. And then at the end uh, of the tool set demo, we'd love to have him come back on and share his thoughts on uh, how he's using the tool set. So, Gene? How you doing? So, yeah, we've come to the point where we're using the tool set on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we've, as a lot of shops have, have tried to make, uh, you know, scripts. Uh, we try to making our own cleaning utilities, like as far as, you know, chaining other company stuff together in order to streamline, uh, you know, how we're servicing machines. Um, the more we talk about the tool set and the more changes you guys make to it, the less other tools I've been using. Uh, the further I go, uh, the further we go down the line, um, the more it's becoming my primary tool uh, for malware removal and a host of other, uh, a host of other tasks. Um, it's been coming along super great. Uh, it's something that, it's probably the first tool I use uh, when a machine comes into the shop for initial diagnostic. And, um, like I said, as time goes on, we're getting further and further away from, from having to use other things. Um, do you want me to go over the, the features in the tool set now, or are we going to wait until afterward? Yeah, I think we can have Alex go through and then I'd love for you to share with, with the audience. This, this is one that really, like, I love making like tools and solutions. So when, when you reach out to us and Alex will show this here in the demo in a second, but when you reach out and say, Hey, this hardware diagnostic thing. Yes, a malware bytes tool does hardware diagnostics for those of you that are listening. Uh, when you reached out and said, hey, this thing works really well, but if it could do these one or two other things, this would replace all of my tools. And just that small little interaction we had, I'd love for you to share at the end of this because it 
it really showed a, a tool that we thought was good, but it wasn't quite great. And you and your input, quite frankly, made it great. And now everyone in TechBench gets to benefit from that. So we'll flip it back to Alex and uh, he'll walk us through some stuff here. And then uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts on, on the tool set. Cool. All right, everyone hear me okay? Should be nice and unmuted. All right, so I'm gonna show you uh, the latest version of our tool set. So what I mean by latest, I literally mean the one that we're currently working on uh, right now and have released to a small set of beta testers. And the reason why I wanna show this build is that we, we brought some really awesome features on this new build. So I wanted to make sure that I kind of showed off some of that stuff as well. So this is the, hold on, let me move it over here. The Malwarebytes tool set version 1.1, 1 .1, uh, build 1070. I'm gonna increase the size here a little bit so that hopefully you can see it a little bit better if you're on a smaller screen. And let me see if we can zoom in, uh, not so much. All right, so I'm gonna make it nice and nice and big. Is it looking, looking good for people? Look good, Sherwood? Sweet. All right, so the first screen that you kind of see here when you launch the tool set is what we call Inform. So the idea of Inform is to give you some information um, from a more of a high level perspective of the system that you have it uh, running on and also tries to identify and share any issues that it can easily find. And so what it's really doing is it's actually kind of talking to the Windows operating system and a whole lot of other components and quickly gathering some, uh, some technical details. So uh, for example, just from this main system page here, I can see what version of Windows I'm running, what it, Windows 10 Pro X64. It's been installed for the last four months, it's activated. I can actually see the version number 1703. So I know as a technician, that means it's running the creator's update. If I wanna get really technical, I get the full build string right here. So I can know, hey, I already know this is running the latest update for the creator's update as well, because I can see that it's got build uh, dot 540 on there. And then we can also see that it says, hey, the last time this computer was updated was today. Now I can click on these little buttons here and get some additional details. I'm not going to do that on this one right now because if I was to click that details button, you would actually see uh, the installed Windows 10 Pro product key as well as the firmware embedded product key of the machine. And uh, well, I don't want that sharing that on the internet, but trust me that this would bring up a separate window with a whole bunch of additional details related to this installation. Um, other things that I can get from this view, I can see that I have a problem uh, in device manager. I can also open device manager real quickly if I wanted to. So if I hit uh, view here, it's gonna tell me why it got flagged uh, as an issue. And it says that uh, my ethernet controller has a code 22, the device is disabled. Uh, so yep, it is disabled. I purposely disabled it for two reasons. One, to show you that we catch these things. And uh, the second reason being, I primarily use my wireless ethernet adapter when I'm docked in. Um, so I uh, actually have the ethernet uh, cable uh, disabled specifically for that. So that way I'm always using uh, wireless. Just happens to be that the uh, electrical lines here in my house aren't so awesome. So my power line over ethernet stuff gets some interference. And so I actually get slower connection speeds if I use ethernet and uh, haven't quite necessarily ran ethernet through my entire house just yet. All right, uh, additional stuff you can see here. We can get some additional details on the actual hardware itself. So the model number, information around the uh, CPU itself. You can see details like how many cores does it have, whether it's logical cores, family stuff, and you can get a whole bunch of additional information. And as you can see, each of these all have a details window that they can launch. It's gonna give you more information, um, which is awesome stuff to have. You'll also notice here that uh, we detect the actual battery itself will tell you the current charge rate that it's at and also the estimated health. Uh, and so what we do with health here is that uh, each battery has, um, it's set inside of it what its lifespan is supposed to be. Uh, and you can actually use some information that Windows can gather from the system hardware to generate an estimated amount of health uh, for that battery. So this could be a good quick indicator to find out maybe why the client's computer is powering off all the time is because its battery is uh, kind of seeing the last, uh, last of its legs. And you can also see cool stuff like the actual uh, hard drive that's installed. And uh, each of these individual uh, categories have even more information. So things like what the default web browser is, what Windows features are installed. And you can see there's links here to quickly jump to these different items so that you can actually play uh, more around with it. And you can see that this gives you quick access to some maybe some additional information. So maybe the, uh, the customer told you that they've been having problems with the program crashing. Well, guess what? 
we've detected that uh, Windows saved some crash information. So you could click on this and see, uh, see those actual event viewer, uh, in, sorry, those actual event log items um, filtered for you. So you can look at those and make a better determination of what's going on. On security, you can see is Windows Defender installed and up to date. Uh, we can see if any additional protections installed and on this test machine here, I have not installed malware bytes. So if I needed to, I could quickly just click the install button and it would install it for me. Uh, network information is just gonna be some basic uh, network information. Um, also gives me the ability to see network shares that are detected, all the different network adapters that I have. And then history uh, gives you some access to some stuff that we kind of bundle in this category that is related to the history of the system. So some cool stuff here, obviously you can check system restore points. You can see how many volume shadows are there. Great to know if you're trying to like recover a file from a previous version. Um, boot history, what this really does is this gives you a, an idea of what the boot experience has been like on this machine. So the average amount of time it takes for the computer to boot, uh, over how many sessions does that, uh, that determination be made. And if you actually click the details button, you can actually get a detailed view of every single um, reboot, restart, and shutdown that's happened recently and why that happened. So this can be a really good indicator of maybe identifying an unknown problem or maybe finding out that there is some sort of uh, other application that's causing the reboot or shutdown to occur. System events, USB history, you can see devices that were connected and disconnected from the machine. So really it's, it's informational items that are probably spread all over the operating system. And instead of making you go to 20 different places, you just have to go to one and you can get all that information. Uh, the next area I'm going to show hey, you. Alex, before, before we go to that one, the uh, the really cool thing about what you saw on the screen here is, is this data wasn't, you know, gathered over a 10 or 20 or 30 minute period. Most of this data that you see on the screen was gathered in just a second or two. And as it's populating all of it, what you can do, very similar to Gene, is you can open this up, kind of get those initial uh, kind of FYIs of what you need to do. And within, you know, about one to two seconds, you could immediately see that, hey, the, ha the health in this battery is is now what it needs to, and maybe they're using an old disk drive. Immediately two upsell opportunities for you within just a second or two. As you saw, Alex just refreshed the screen there. That was a live uh, scanning of, of the system. So a really great check-in tool for you to be able to say, client, you know, I know you came in for some malware, but did you know that you've got this antiquated hard drive and you've got actually a battery? Do you wanna think about just stepping into a brand new machine? And there you haven't wasted a single minute on doing any of that malware removal on a machine that shouldn't be worked on anyway because the hardware is broken or out of date. So I'll turn it back to Alex as we get into some of the cool stuff that we're working on, which is uh, all the scanning stuff. Yep, I'm just gonna answer one of the questions here that actually came in because it's actually related to the screen I've got up right this second. Someone asked about, can you do driver or firmware updates directly from the tool set? Um, or, and is there an ability to quickly jump to a manufacturer support page for that particular model? So um, for the first question, no, we don't have it doing driver and firmware updates for you right now, uh, but it's definitely something that we might look into adding in the future. Uh, a little bit of a big effort to take on, but it's definitely something that I'm going to take note on uh, as something to look deeper into. As far as manufacturer support page for that model, um, again, that could get a little bit more difficult if we're going at the model level, but we might be able to do something where if we see it's a Dell, we could send you to the Dell support page because those kind of higher level support pages usually kind of stay the same. It just gets a little bit more difficult when you start trying to go at the model specific level because every vendor might uh, sort things differently or they might not even make it easy to access the model level support page without filling in some sort of search form. All right, uh, so the next section, uh, which is probably somewhere that a lot of our technicians and current user base go to is the scan component. And I've gone full screen here, so this makes it look uh, a lot like a lot of empty spaces there, but if you run in an actual machine, it's going to look a little bit different. That's because our, our UI didn't dynamically changes itself based off of the screen resolution that you have there. Um, so we kind of have separated it into two, two components today. In the future, uh, we want to make this into one kind of scanning experience, but we have the on the left-hand side, the malware side. So that's powered by our Malwarebytes breach remediation uh, software, which is based off of our traditional Malwarebytes anti-malware engine. So this is a portable scanning component um, and it will scan for and remove malware, pups and pums, uh, just like the, your traditional Malwarebytes program uh, does without having to install something. The only thing it would have to download is the latest definition updates 
uh, in order to perform that actual scanning operation. And then on the right hand side is a unique scanner that our team built that we're calling the Malwarebytes issue scanner. And so what's that, that is more geared towards is finding and repairing problems related to the Windows operating system that's currently running, as well as devices that happen to be connected to this machine. Um, so that includes some uh, low level hardware diagnostics that we're able to interface with now. Specifically, uh, one that Gene will actually probably share a little bit of a story on uh, once I get done doing the demo here, we actually can talk to the hard drive and get detailed smart attribute information. So what that means is that we can actually um, more accurately diagnose if the hard drive is failing or it is potentially going to be failing. Because rather than just looking as, hey, has smart been tripped, we go one step further and look at actual known um, smart errors that can lead to drive failure. We can count them and report against them and say, hey, this drive has had a thousand uncorrectable errors. You should run some more detailed hard drive diagnostics because uh, this drive is showing an indication that it could be failing in the near future. So that type of stuff is uh, built into our issue scanner. Um, running these scanners are very, very simple. You literally click the uh, the scan button. So if we wanted to do a malware scan, I'm just going to click custom so you can see that there, we give you a bunch of additional options here. We can run a hyper scan, which is going to be a real quick scan. We can run a threat scan, which is kind of our default scan. A full scan if you want to scan absolutely everything. Or if you want to scan specific directories, uh, you can do that as well. There's a specific option. Um, we give you some additional options, like if you want to turn on a special rootkit detection, we'll scan, scanning for pops, whether or not you're going to download updates for this particular scan, or maybe only after the updates are 24 hours old. You can kind of change your options in here for how you want the updates to, to be handled. Um, also, you'll notice that we have a process killer built into this. So this is another thing that's unique to our tool set that's not even available in our traditional um, anti-malware or Malwarebytes products as far as when it comes to scanning. So what this will do is this will kill uh, any processes outside of a known whitelist that we've created. And that whitelist is designed to keep things running like your remote uh, desktop applications um, and other Malwarebytes applications and other Windows services and processes that we know are critical for the computer to stay healthy. So that's great if you are trying to run this on an infected machine, you've got Windows popping up at you left and right. Uh, you can start a scan, it's gonna kill all that stuff so that way the scan is the most effective possible. And then uh, we could click start. I'm not going to, because obviously that takes some time to, to run a scan. Uh, and I wanna show you our issue scanner because that actually goes super, super fast. So uh, if this was infected, I would run a scan for malware and let it kind of go through its process. And it's very similar to any other scanner where you see a nice little progression and then a list of the things that it found. But I'm gonna run an actual issue scan uh, on this machine. And it's going to actually start scanning right away. Uh, this will probably take about 12 to 13 seconds to complete. Um, and it's actually scanning a whole a truckload of different issues. So it's gonna look for problems that could be related to Windows Update, could be related to services that aren't running properly, could be related to default services that are missing. Um, it's gonna check your network connection to see if it can properly access the internet it can properly download stuff from the internet, so on and so forth. And yes, I have pre-staged some issues to actually fail, uh, which is on purpose. Um, and as we can see here, we have some smart errors. Um, we also have uh, the ethernet device that I disabled earlier. And then we have a print job that is stuck in the print queue. So this is found within just literally, as it says here uh, in their summary, um, it took only 31 seconds. And it found all this nice, interesting stuff. So if I click on this issue right here that it found, and you notice that the remediation here is run diagnostics. Obviously, we can't fix a failing hard drive for you. That would be impossible unless we devise remote robots to fly out and start fixing things. Um, what I can see here is that on my right-hand pane, I get a lot more detailed information of what these failures were. So I can see that in the past 11 months of this device existing, it's had 2,100 smart errors. And uh, we actually can pull the last, or some of the latest errors to get more actual detail. So if I click on these, um, you can see that I can see the actual smart error itself and what it reported it as so that I can make a much more informed determination of, of is this an actual failing hard drive or is this potentially a benign error? Or in this case, 
Maybe it's because I have outdated firmware on the hard drive, or maybe there's something wrong with the controller. I would obviously want to take a look at this error message and make a much more uh, informed determination. But in the grand scheme of things, Windows would have never told me about all these smart errors, right? I, Windows isn't going to yell at me and tell me that the drive was failing. And in most cases, technicians have to go find a third party utility or in the, hard, the manufacturer's hard drive not to even try to get this information. But with our utility, we can get to it right away. So Alex, I think I uh, would love to hear from Gene on his thoughts here. This is uh, just to kind of really promote Gene here. Gene really helped uh, us fine, fine tune this specific app, uh, you know, aspect of the, of the application. And uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts on it, Gene. Yeah, so um, we used to use a third party application that I'm not going to mention today, um, but I swore by it like it was the holy grail uh, because it never failed me. And um, when, you know, we noticed the tool set in the issue scanner, there was some hard drive detection. Uh, we went back and forth. I will have to say one of the only reasons I'm here today uh, was because I reached out to you guys um, and you were awesome. You were awesome in every way. Uh, you know, I couldn't sing your praise higher. Everything I asked for or needed help with or thought, you know, maybe would help uh, the tool set be better. Uh, you guys jumped right on it. You did everything you could to help out. Um, I will say that this is, basically puts puts the other tool I was using, uh, you know, away. I'm, I'm done using that. Um, it definitely, the, the, the issue scanner has already saved me countless times. It saved me, not only has it saved me from scenarios that I would have missed, but it saves me an uncountable amount of time. Uh, the way the, the error logs uh, and everything gets sorted in here, you would, you'd be digging for hours to get the same information this gives you in about a minute. Um, the hard drive testing has gone from uh, pretty good to pretty darn, I mean, I don't know, I can't use, can't really use the words to express it, but it, it's pretty awesome now. Uh, my third party tools retired. Um, there are actually errors that this is presenting to me that I was missing with the other tool, the tool that I thought was the best. Um, yeah, I mean, even when I'm not uh, getting smart warnings or smart errors, uh, this can guide me to some logs uh, that I'm able to investigate further and uh, find out things that any of those other tools aren't going to find for me regardless. So, um, I, I, I mean, I can't give enough thanks to how much time it saved me. That, that's probably the biggest uh, save of all. Cool. Yeah. And so ho hopefully, uh, Gene, thank you for the, the incredibly nice words. So hopefully all of you on, on the call uh, realize, you know, Gene is not a paid spokes dude, uh, but uh, it, it has really, really helped him out in, in his business out uh, on the East Coast. Hey, at, at the you end mind of this, if I interrupt you for a second? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, actually, the, the only reason that I sound the way I do right now is, is honestly, these, these guys have the best stuff. I mean, if they didn't have the best, the reason we're all here watching the webinar to begin with. Um, if they didn't have the best stuff, we wouldn't we wouldn't be having this conversation. The thing is, is now you're taking it from having the best, you know, anti malware solution, and you're giving us a tool set that, uh, you know, I couldn't have dreamed of in the first place. To be able to talk to a company of your size and stature, uh, and, and get a response the way I do, I mean, it's 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 a breath of fresh air in the industry. That's for sure. Thanks, man. We'll uh, we'll open up the trials for everybody if you want to try this out on your own machines and see if you come across the same uh, same excitement as Gene does at the end of this because uh, it's actually free today uh, and for the next few weeks here. So we'll get into that here uh, in a little bit. Alex, you got anything else here for uh, for the uh, for the actual demo? Yeah, yeah. Just uh, just a couple more quick things and then we'll we we can move on to the next part. So um, someone asked about the event log stuff. That all depends on whether or not it's been cleared. Uh, that is correct. So if, uh, any of the issue scanner components that rely on event log reporting, yes, if you cleared out the entire event log, obviously it's not going to be able to report against that. But we have a lot of issue scanners uh, and issues that we're detecting for that are not relying on that. A good one is the smart error logging. That's all stored in the actual drive itself. Uh, so we're still going to get that regardless if you cleared the event log or not. Things like whether or not a, a device is enabled or disabled, still going to be able to detect that. Uh, so there's a lot of things that we're still going to be able to to detect and tell you uh, are failing uh, without relying on that event. Um, the last thing I want to show you here is the toolbox. So the toolbox is kind of our, um, I'd say, staging ground for things that aren't necessarily automated 
are additional tools or repair capabilities that we want to make it uh, easier for you to access. So uh, the biggest feature that I like to kind of show off here is the My Tool section. So what the My Tools area allows you to do is kind of expand the capabilities of the tool set to where you can actually bring in your favorite third party utilities and tools and make them part of the user interface here. So that way you're not having to dig through your flash drive to find where those tools are. You can actually add them here so that you can easily launch them and execute them. So the My Tools editor allows you to do that. And what you can do is you can add utilities that you want. Um, and I'm not gonna do an actual utility right here right now because I don't wanna get in trouble adding some third party utility that uh, doesn't wanna be part of this webcast, but you could add any third party utility you want. You could add your own batch file. You could add your own um, script. You could do whatever you wanna add here and you have complete free reign of saying, where does it, where is it located at? You can add any additional command line arguments to it. You can give it a name, the vendor information, tool description. You can even tell it what operating system uh, it runs on. So that way, if you're running your this tool set on a Windows XP machine, maybe you have a tool that only runs on Windows 7 and higher, that tool won't show up uh, if you're running it on XP if you've configured this appropriately. So that way, you can kind of target uh, utilities that need to, uh, that can only run on specific operating systems. Uh, the thing that's cool that we're adding in this uh, build is the ability to check for updates. So I can actually quickly check for updates and see what's available here and actually update everything that's on the tool set that's provided by Malwarebytes. Um, this will also add the ability to do an in-place update of the whole tool set itself. Uh, and obviously, uh, unfortunately right now, I don't have the build where I can show that feature off because I would need a version that's newer than this one to update into, but it will actually do an in-place update where you can see it can download the latest version of ADW Cleaner, JRT, our anti-root kit. We also give you a copy of Malwarebytes 3 to make it easy to protect a customer's computer. So we'll download the latest version of that installer for you and we'll place it on your actual uh, tool set folder structure for you. So you don't have to like go to your downloads folder and actually move it into place. We handle all that stuff for you. And you can kind of see here under the different sections under protect, this is where we house the ability to install Malwarebytes 3. You can see here, I've got nice little icons that tell me that this uh, installation of the tool set doesn't already have this component downloaded. So if I tried to launch this right now, it'd actually get a window that tells me, hey, this isn't downloaded uh, onto your tool set. Do you want us to do that for you? And if this item actually was on my tool set structure but needed a newer version, that icon would change to a uh, kind of cloud update icon. So you actually would get a visual indication that this utility has an update. And if you tried to launch it, it would say, hey, do you want to try downloading uh, the latest version first, or do you want to go ahead and use this version that's on your tool set? So that way you can kind of make the determination on whether or not you want to use the latest one or not. Uh, you'll see some additional tools here under Remediate, Anti-Rootkit, JRT, the ability to run ADW Cleaner. Uh, if for some reason our GUI malware scanner is failing for you, we give you access to la launch a command line version of the anti-malware scanner. Uh, this is all pre-configured for you, so you don't have to enter any uh, special product keys or anything like that. Uh, also, if you're on Windows Defender Higher, you can launch a Windows Defender offline scan from here. Under repair, a whole bunch of built-in operating system repair components and some stuff that we have built into the tool set for you. And then under OS tools, this is just going to give you exposure to things that uh, are within the Windows operating system that you have access to, uh, so that you that way you can quickly access them without having to go to the digging through the start menu or digging through command prompt uh, to launch them. So this will do it automatically for you. So this is kind of a cool kind of overview of the tool set. Um, and you'll continue to see more and more fun stuff coming from us. Um, in fact, you'll get to see something uh, on our next version here that includes the ability to view reports because I know someone was asking about that earlier. Um, we keep them on the PC itself. So that, what that means is that on the newer tool sets going forward, you'll be able to look at repair history uh, that are run by either the malware scanning side or the issue scanning side. You'll be able to actually open up and look at previous scan reports and you can pull it up and see what was found, whether or not you did actually any repairs on those scans or whether you skip that type of stuff, but you'll be able to pull them up whenever you need to, and you'll be able to view them, delete them, do what you want. And then further down the line, we'll have the ability to actually export that into, uh, into a text file, uh, into clipboard, and maybe even some other systems uh, in the future. Cool, so that is the tool set in a nutshell. Um, it is USB friendly in case anyone's wondering. In fact, that's what we designed it to run on is actually on a USB flash drive. So we do not recommend running it on uh, optical or read-only media because then it can't update itself. Uh, so yeah, so good stuff. Okay, so Sherwood, I'm gonna hand things back to you so you can talk about the all favorite 
question, which is around uh, pricing, unless we want Gene to say more, but I think Gene said a bunch of nice stuff already about the tool set. They did. Yeah, so pricing, how much does this thing cost? Uh, $2 million, just <laughs> kidding. So I want to show you kind of what the current offering is here today and then what the future offering is going to be. So if you look on the left-hand side of your screen, uh, call it the early bird special. And these are all the advanced features. Remember, we only have two real options here. Do you want to be just a reseller with none of the cool stuff and you get kind of a slight discount? That's basic. Not even going to show that on the screen. Uh, what we have here is the advanced. Today, you get awesome discounts on our reseller side. And if you're looking for exact pricing, we do start in the 50% range for just one license. And as that scales up, uh, as your business scales up, we scale that up with you. And we've got very, very healthy margins uh, for you to be able to make really, really healthy incomes uh, on just selling the malware bytes uh, three to, to, your, uh, to your clients. Obviously the tool set and all the greatness that Alex just described there, our dedicated communities, as well as our alpha program. So early access, uh, to maybe it's a new future build of ADW Cleaner, or maybe we've got a prototype of ADW Cleaner inside of the tool set, hint, hint. Uh, we've got some really cool stuff happening there. So today it's free. There's gonna be a link at the end of the show uh, and you can sign up and really no commitments. Uh, you get a year's worth and uh, we hope that you use the tool set, tell us some stuff about it, get some feedback to us. And of course, we hope that you, you know, offer the paid version of Malwarebytes to your clients. In the very near future, we're going to be switching to what's called our paid offer. And really, this is where that win for us and the two wins for you come in. So all the great stuff that I just described will still be available inside of the future paid version. And our introductory price is going to be $349. In addition to getting all of those great items that I described, you also get a 25 pack of MB3 that you can resell to your clients. So for those of you that are whipping out your calculator right now, that's $13.96 per seat for your first 25 purchases with us. And any of you that are offering, you know, single break fix solutions or maybe some sort of quasi management uh, for, for your residential clients or even, you know, the small dentist office that has one or two clients, this is a killer deal for you. Um, you can easily take that $349 and selling about eight or nine copies of our software in that 25 pack, you're going to make your money back right away. And throughout the remainder of that year, you'll still have access to that really deep discount of Malwarebytes if you need to purchase uh, more additional seats. So again, uh, get on the early bird special today. It's truly free. Uh, and then in the future, what it's going to be is you're essentially buying into the Malwarebytes program itself. We we'll give you 25 copies of the software that you can resell, as well as all the great stuff that you saw here. What you don't see on the screen is all of the great access that you have to Alex, myself, the engineers, or anything that's happening inside of our company or even our industry. We'd love to open up that line of communications for you, as well as give you five free copies of Malwarebytes for your home use. And we call those lifetime licenses. And what those mean is as long as you're part of the TechBench program, you re-up every year, those five seats for you will remain valid throughout your uh, partnership and subscription with us. And if you didn't pick up on this, all of our keys as of August 1st actually work on Windows and Mac. So you don't have to worry about finding the key for one OS versus the next OS. They just work on both. Uh, we'll be converting some of our keys uh, prior to August 1st, 2017, but any purchased uh, August 1st and later, automatically work on both of the platforms today. So I think we'll pause there and maybe Steve, you could help us do some of the questions that I'm hoping are uh, filling up in the uh, in the chat that I can't see. Absolutely, I would love to. Um, so, super interested in TechBench. I tried to run it on a CST laptop yesterday, Windows 10, TechBench would not run. I didn't capture the error message. It did work fine on my test run on my own Windows 10 desktop. Um, I'm hoping that TechBench offers a slick report to print out for my customers. So I think it's safe to say this this has been in a testing phase for almost a year now, right? Yeah, and as we've, we've really tried to, to rebuild a lot of this technology and, and work you know, hand in hand with, I don't know if Dwight's still on the call, but with folks like Dwight and others that are offering a variety of different services, whether it's you know, your, your all break fix, or maybe you're starting to get into some MSP-like things, or maybe using a residential MSP-like client. I know there's a very popular one out there that Ian and team are doing, and they're, they're, it's, they're doing a great job with it, by the way. Um, we really like the work that they're doing. And uh, you know, for, for the errors that you mentioned, uh, certainly just send us a note and we'll try to dig into that. Uh, if there's no logs or something like that, we'll, we'll see if we can uh, try to replicate it. Um, and then what, what was the other, uh, the end part of that question, was that from the same uh, individual? 
Yeah, uh, yes, he's hoping that TechBench offers a slick report to print out for his customers. Yes, and currently today, it we, we do not have a full report uh, that is ready. We've got a couple mock-ups that we've been working with uh, a few shops out on the East Coast uh, to to really give you a report that adds, uh, adds that value that you need to be able to show uh, essentially what's on that information screen, but maybe in a easy to use client version of that uh, and then post that initial report. We want to give you a better detailed report that you kind of saw with what Alex was working on there, uh, but we, we do not have that uh, ready to go today. Okay. And and he, he popped another and it said uh, that was running from a USB stick, by the way. So, okay. If, if that, if that helps you guys at all. So um, next question here, can you pre prep a tool set on a USB device with the latest definitions for PCs that have internet connectivity issues? Yes. No, yes. just kidding. You can, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course you can. Uh, so how, how the architecture of the framework uh, uh, is designed is it, again, it's built for a technician. So I know when you're out and maybe you're home for Christmas or a holiday and that members of the family members like, oh, can you update this thing? You're like, oh, shoot, I got to go do all this updating. You can definitely preload all that stuff if you need to. Also, our licensing model is um, what we try to do is we put the faith in you that you sign up for TechBench and we sign up with you as a partner. So we don't require that you put in that licensing information every single time. So you have a nice extended time to live where if you're injecting the definitions or you're updating maybe in the morning and you're out for the next two, two, three, four days, uh, it's going to run no problem uh, for you without that uh, internet connection. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, 349 a year, a month. Oh, a year. Never mind. A uh, month. Did we make a mistake on our price? Should, should we say a month? Just kidding. <laughs> <to me. laughs> so, so here's a good one. How do renewals work when the product expires after a year? Is there anything yep. that promotes the consumers renew through us versus going to a big box store or just going directly to your website? Yeah, that's that's a really good question. So I'll, I'll I'll put two blunt answers on the table for anybody that's worked with me. You know, I just don't I don't sugarcoat. I just give it to you straight. So currently today, our renew uh, rev share is is not enabled for you. Uh, and so what we've been suggesting uh, the shops do is send a uh, reminder or put a little reminder in their calendar at 90 days out. And you're more than welcome at that 90 day period. That will be before our software actually starts interacting with your clients you'll be able to do that renew for them. And the renew process is kind of messy today where you'll have to do that renew with the client or you could even you know, purchase a heavily discounted you know, version of essentially a second year of a renew from us and do that overlay of the install. It is a new key and all that, it is messy. The second thing, uh, so, so just to be clear, it's, it's messy, but you can do it today. In the future, uh, we're actually starting to look at some additional e-commerce um, partners because our current infrastructure does not allow this uh, to happen today. We kind of we grew really quickly and some of the features that we needed for specifically rev share on second and third year renewals is not set up today. Um, but we are looking uh, with, with the current provider today and we're actually currently in an extremely light alpha pilot test uh, with seven shots today and they're going to be using it for the next 45 or so days uh, and telling us quite frankly does, does this thing work or does it not work and uh, I hear you loud and clear. I would say on the business Reseller side, that is our number one uh, action that we're going to uh, to address here, hopefully in the near future. Awesome. No promises, but it's the number one thing on our list. Awesome, awesome. Is there any way to run the issue scanner from a command line and output to a log file, basically so it runs silently in the background? Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll take that one too, Alex. So currently today, what... Um, how do I, how do I say this? So what, what we've learned over the years is there's there's kind of two types of technicians that are out there. There are those that really want to get their hands dirty and use that command line and you know get down to business and do it. Maybe they they know the skill set or maybe they just want to, or maybe it's just you know us geeks being geeks. We just want to take stuff apart. Um, and then there's the other the other geeks that maybe are novices or maybe they're just starting in the industry or maybe it's an intern that you've hired at your business or maybe it's a business owner that's like, you know what, I'm just trying to focus on the bottom line today and I just kind of want to get down to, down to brass tacks. And I want to get this machine in and out. And as we were doing our investigation and um, you know, building this first version of the tool set, that second category is really what came out loud and clear. I would say it's about a 70-30 split between uh, our shops and we're working with, uh, I can't give you the exact number, but it's well into the hundreds, maybe even thousands of, of partners that we've got uh, giving us feedback on this right now. And um, so what I can say is version one is GUI, easy, 
more profit driven uh, and secondary versions, uh, if people are loud enough in that 30%, uh, we're more than, more than willing to look at that from a, a command line or automation standpoint. Awesome. Um, all of this depends on the event log not having been cleared, right? The, uh, uh, the scans. Alex, you want to jump in and uh, explain this one again? Yeah, yeah. So this is this is question is it's a great question. It's around the issue scanner. Uh, so some of the issues that we we pull for, we actually hit up uh, the event viewer logs to try to identify issues. Some of them are like NTFS and disk errors that are reported through Windows event logs. Uh, services that aren't starting up appropriately that have crashed or created errors. You're right. We're pulling some of that information from event logs. So if you clear them we would not be able to see those things. But we also scan for things that are not in the event log. So disabled devices, missing default services, um, the actual smart error table of the, of the hard drive, like that stuff's not going to get cleared out if you clear out the event logs. So we're still going to be able to report against that stuff. Awesome. <clears throat> OK. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Any softball questions, Steve? Just kidding. <laughs> yes. So is the free offer today free going forward forever, for a year, for three weeks until you change your mind? Yeah. So uh, fair question. So right now it's currently free and we, we've had it free for um, essentially this whole entire year. So we launched the program as you currently see it today on January 31st, 2017. And up until today, it's been free. And what I can tell you is sometime in the next 30 to 45-ish days, we will be switching um, to that 349. If you recall the question uh, a little bit ago about some e-commerce stuff we're working on, we're trying to do a variety of things at once. So it's less, uh, quite frankly, so it's less painful for, for all of you. Um, but do know we are gonna be switching uh, to that 349 here in, uh, let's call it 30 days to be safe, but probably more in the 45 to even 60 day range. And then that will be so, a one-year one subscription. So we can get it for free, but until you start charging the three forty-nine. That is correct. Yeah, if you uh, there'll be a slide right after this where there is a link for you to sign up. Uh, please click click that link because that'll actually give you priority in our sales queue uh, coming in. And today it's no commitment. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, can you expand on the hard drive testing? Um, if smart isn't tripped in the hard drive and a quick scan isn't showing anything, but we still suspect that a failing drive, um, uh, can there be like a deep or a full diagnostics? So yeah, um, if smart isn't tripped, we will always report what is actually stored on the smart table. So if there are smart errors at all, whether or not the, so, Hold on, let's step back just a second. So what the gentleman's talking there is smart being tripped. So there is a flag where the manufacturer has set some sort of guidelines that says, if these errors have occurred, flag this as it's been tripped. And Windows actually looks for that flag sometimes and report it in the event logs. So like that flag's gotta be tripped by hitting uh, some sort of standard set by the manufacturer. We go above and beyond and go, we not only will we check for that being Trigger, uh, triggered, but we'll actually read the physical smart error log table itself and report any error that it has found. And now it's not going to be absolutely every single error that's possible. We have actually did, done a whole bunch of research uh, and Gene even help, kind of helped out with us uh, with real live samples of failing hardware. We did a lot of in-depth analysis to find out what are the most common um, errors that lead to hard drive failure. And so reporting against those off some basic thresholds. So as long as that type of error and that type of threshold has been hit, we'll report against it. And um, I can give you a full detailed list if you absolutely need it of which ones we're reporting against. Uh, but if SMART hasn't been tripped, and as long as it has uh, an error that we report against, you'll still get it. So there isn't really necessarily a concept between a deep, full, or quick scan with our utility it scans for all of them. So it finds any of them that have been tripped, it's gonna report it to you uh, regardless. And if so, can the results be trusted as much as a tool running outside of Windows? Um, I mean, it's it's the, the, the smart error logs we're reporting are ones that are stored in the physical drive itself. So uh, that has no bearing necessarily on Windows itself. Um, is there a possibility that you could get a more accurate uh, result of whether or not a drive is considered bad from some sort of external Windows utility. Uh, sure, that, that's possible. Um, but 
And it's kind of a, there's not really a yes or no answer to that one, so to speak. So, so there, there could be um, a piece of hardware or um, heavier duty software out there that can do a better job. I, I mean, let's, let's be realistic. This, this isn't being sold as hard drive diagnostic testing. It's being sold as whole computer uh, let's make your life easier as a tech. Yeah, and it's, Alex, I'll, I'll take this one. The, the analogy I like using is, think of it like a doctor's office. You have varying levels of uh, people and kind of levels of skills uh, that you interact with. You've got the nurse that uh, will kind of check you in and do some stuff and get your blood pressure and kind of get you on the right uh, path. You have the general practitioner that helps you with your specific issue. And then you have maybe a specialist and then you maybe even have a surgeon after that. So if you think about something like a headache, if you were to go see all four of those people having a headache, the nurse would probably give you some aspirin and you would be able to go on your way. What we're seeing and what we heard from a lot of these shops that we're working with is that there was no real in between. So the person comes up to the counter and says, I have a headache. And immediately what people were doing is they were skipping the nurse, general practitioner, the specialist, and immediately going into surgery saying, I need to run this two hour, three hour, four hour, five hour hard drive or hardware scan. And although that certainly you know, would work and it will help you get uh, to, to the finish line, it's really not profitable for your business. Now, if you step into that nicely and say, hey, I want to run this Inform. So think of Inform as kind of like that nurse and that general practitioner. We're going to say, hey, dummy, you actually have a headache. Go take some aspirin versus, oh, you have a headache. I'm going to move you into brain surgery right away. So as you get further down that line, we absolutely recommend that you use more specialized tools, uh, just like you would in the malware world. Uh, you may have a primary scanner, hopefully it's us, and you may have a secondary scanner, and we can absolutely be your specialist in that arena. But from the other stuff, where we're at today is we're trying to get you the quickest, most accurate information that you can make that decision where you need to go with your client next. You know, I, I got to say, that's like the coolest analogy I've ever heard uh-huh. someone. I don't know if you just made that up as you went. or No, I've used that for years. Okay. <laughs> I've used that for many, many years. Okay, because I was about to ask you to start, you know, selling things for my company. Uh, I'm not going to lie. That, that that was just smooth, man. I've, uh, I've worked with a lot of technicians in a, in a previous world, uh, may have made uh, tools for about 10,000 technicians at the same time. And they, uh, they're they very, very opinionated over a uh, 10-year period. Good, good, good stuff, though, but it's, it's great to have a, a, a clear uh, uh, layout of the, of the battlefield, if you will. So we're, we're all talking the same thing. That's very true. That's very true. All right. Uh, let's see here. Along the same lines, is there a memory testing program that can be trusted as much as a program outside of Windows? Trying to find tools that can be used as trusted as much as possible when working remotely. Uh, so so right now, we don't have any, um, I would say, memory diagnostic utilities. If the failing uh, piece of hardware reports itself, uh, there's a component in Windows um, where there's a hardware error reporting architecture. Um, if that is that hardware error is reporting itself through that means, our tool set would catch it. Uh, but if it's not, which a lot of memory doesn't, um, then obviously we're not going to. So for memory testing today, I would recommend using some sort of uh, third-party utility to get that type of work done. Yeah, and there's actually, uh, we can't maybe name the name of it right now, but if uh, you remember my doctor analogy, uh, use that as a starting point. There's uh, some really cool remote uh, software Windows-ish stuff that uh, one of these companies is working on. And, uh, you know, there's a huge debate, you know, does it uh, diagnose correctly in Windows or is it outside of Windows? And I think, you know, it's, I'd again, use that kind of doctor analogy. There's, there's a lot of really good information that you can get from talking to your nurse and your general practitioner versus trying to schedule that, uh, that brain surgery on uh, day one. Awesome. Okay. Next question. Do, 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 do. Sounds like this isn't there yet, but it's the first year. Please make it more MSP friendly. Um, are there any plans to not pop up renewals on the endpoint, bill us, and we just rebuild a customer? I think, uh, was that individual, they happen to be on the, the first part of our call, which was the endpoint protection one. Do you, do you know that, Steve? I do not know. 
Okay. Uh, whoever this is, uh, thanks for the question. Uh, encourage you, if you didn't see the first uh, first part in this two-part series, we did talk about our new Malwarebytes endpoint protection, and we actually got a little bit into the MSP side of things. And oh, yes. It's, it's yeah. Prejay. It's the same guy from the oh, yeah. oh, yeah, perfect. And, you know, what I'll say about that is we're, we're, we're coming from two opposite ends of – actually, kind of three, three opposite ends of the spectrum right here at Malwarebytes. We've got our consumer stuff that you all hopefully love, and, and you know, that's why you're on the call today. And we've got the large enterprise and mid-market stuff that we talked about with our new cloud and input protection. And then we have all of our stuff for all of us on this call, which is our technician space. And what you're starting to see is kind of a convergence of all of that. So our cloud platform you know, is not built today uh, for some of these endpoint solutions to be, to be handed out. But you know, it is something that is on a radar that we're discussing uh, we're discussing with our teams here. No, no commitments or anything on that, but it, it, it's obviously a very popular question that, that we hear from you. So today, think of the technician stuff as kind of a standalone um, version, and then any of the MSP stuff would fall into our endpoint protection uh, stuff that we had talked about in part one of the webinars. Excellent. I think that's all the questions. I'm checking mine here oh, yep, too. That was that was me trying to work out what option would be the best fit. Love the products. In the future, uh, possibility for a Malwarebytes bootable live CD that would allow for deeper hardware diagnostics. Yeah, uh, we're live on the internet. Um, we want that too. Uh, I can't okay. let too much out of the bag right now. Um, but so Alex, you heard it here first, guys. They're working on it. They're working on it. It just uh, this this one makes me really excited because this is like a super geeky one. Uh, and Alex, myself, and the engineers that you saw on the screen, we we've got an extensive uh, background in offline operating systems and doing exactly what you did. You can probably search on the internet and find some stuff that we've done before. Uh, and what we're trying to do here is is really reimagine it, but for Malwarebytes products first. Um, so we're going to start small. Uh, and, and try to make sure that our stuff is, uh, uh, we'll call it offline friendly uh, for you to use, but no commitments on that. We, we've got some internal prototype stuff, but again, that alpha section that we mentioned inside of the TechBench program, that's where we do talk a lot about these things, or maybe somebody reaches out like Gene again uh, and says, hey, I've got a PE background, or I've got you know, an offline disk that I'm using on my own, and I've kind of you know, duct taped it together and it's kind of working, but it's not doing this thing. We can say, hey, stop doing that because it actually doesn't work, which I have to tell everyone today, don't use Malwarebytes in an offline environment today. There are some elements that may or may not work and you may or may not be able to see that testing. So if you are doing it, reach out to us and we can kind of guide a little bit and let you know what is and is not working because um, there are components that are working, but to say 100% that it is working across the board uh, would, would be a false statement today. Um. Okay, we've got a couple more here. It seemed like there was some mention of reseller potential with TechBench. I would assume TechBench is just for the technician and Malwarebytes is the reseller potential. And I think I can answer this one. As, Do it. Yes, you're correct. You're going to be a spokes uh, spokesperson for us and I'll be one for you. There you go. Can we run this remotely on a customer computer? For example, through a remote desktop app like Screen Connect, Splashtop, et cetera. Yep, no problem. Awesome. Um, can you give all of us one free year of TechBench? I see it here. It's in the questions. Uh, who asked that? We're going to give them negative two years. I think, it, uh, I think his name was Webley. <laughs> Webley. Yes, Webley. Uh, if you follow the link on the next page, uh, you can sign up. And, and really what, what we're doing today is we don't have our full you know, trial, basic, and... Uh, uh, advanced version. So essentially, everybody gets the advanced version as as a trial today, and we've extended that trial to be to be one year. So you can try it out. Let us know what's working, uh, and also get access to to some really great reseller uh, opportunities for your clients out there. Do you guys have a roadmap available? We do not publish that. Uh, we sort of do uh, to some degree, depending on which product or portion of, uh, whether it's the, the, the tool set product or the TechBench program itself. We've got some of that up uh, in discussion on our private community forums today. So is any type of, um, do, 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 do. Is, is any type of PSA or RMM integration currently on your roadmap? For TechBench, it is not, but for our endpoint protection, uh, which was the first part of our 
uh, of our two-part webinar here. It, it is on the roadmap, but that is, uh, it's not our team, so I can't fully commit uh, to what they're uh, having on the roadmap, but I do know it is uh, in their discussions that are happening. Okay. Um, is this the same link we already have signed up for with Malwarebytes TechBench? Um, this one is slightly different. Uh, it's got the little reference tag at the end. Uh, what that does is it just gives us a flag on our queue so that we give Steve and his webinar folks uh, a higher priority in our queue. As you can imagine, we've uh, got a slightly large queue right now. Excellent. Well, uh, do you have any other slides, any contact information that you want them to have? Um, I, I believe uh, Michael Sherwood's cell phone number is eight four. No, I'm <laughs> yeah, I got your credit card number, so watch out. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, everybody call me. I'll just give you a free credit card. It's totally Excellent. fine. Uh, Gene, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Um, some some honest feedback for us as managed services business owners. What what can you say, man? Well, I can tell you that. <clears throat> Uh, they're one of the most pleasant companies that I've had the, the pleasure of working with. So if there's anything the tool set doesn't do, or if there's anywhere you get stuck, if there's anything, you know, as, as, as far as anything I've asked them up to this point, they've been able to help me with. They're super friendly. Uh, the tool set works great. There's not a lot of, uh, you know, anti-malware solutions out there, especially anything like the tool set that I've found where you're able to, I mean, I, I've been able to do some cool things with it that aren't really, you know, you're not really, they're not advertised things, <laughs> but uh, it, it definitely has gotten me out of a jam, uh, you know, more times than I can count in the short time I've been using it. Um, so what was, cool, let's, let's, let's dive a little deeper here, Gene. What yeah. non-advertised things have you done with this tool? Oh, there's, there's some stuff that they're working on and I've been experimenting with myself. And that so, so part of like the alpha stuff. Yeah, there's just, it's okay. just some, some new features that are definitely that I, my fingers are crossed are in the pipeline. Um, okay. that I'm able to use the tool set in, in, in you know, it, it's make, it's making my day by day a lot easier. And there's some really hairy situations that's been able to get me out of, um, you know, off label. Uh, but it's also on label has been doing a phenomenal job. So I'm definitely going to stay in. Yeah. I'm definitely going to stay in touch with the team and, uh, uh, you know, keep trying to make the, product better as, as much as I can help with at least because I know what I need. So I'm going to do everything I can to help them, uh, you know, help us to help them help me. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Now, um, I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with some other tools. Uh, I, I'm just going to toss some names out there uh, or, or maybe, maybe some suggestions of names. And I'd like you to tell me, uh, which one's better, this this uh, Malwarebytes TechBench or this other tool? Um, okay. D7. I have not used. I've heard of D7. Um, I, there is some reporting that D7 does, and some centralized. Uh, from what I understand, uh, there's some centralized reporting it does that isn't available in the tool set right now. And and what about this? Uh, the suite. Oh gosh, what's maybe it's a tech suite or a suite of yeah, tech. that's tech suites, the real thing. That's um, <laughs> that also does, I believe, uh, this, some of the same things. This it, it's not, it's more of a portable solution from my experience okay. with it. Um, uh, I have used it. One way I've used it that's off label that I'm sure I'm allowed to say is uh, I've, I've I've set it in a central network location and run it. There isn't support for that but it definitely saves on how many thumb drives you have floating around the office. Um, so um, the, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, depending on how many machines you have on the bench, you know, you might start running short on thumb drives. The network location worked great for me. It's definitely an off-label thing. They don't support it right now. However, I was able to get that going in multiple instances without issue. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, it's it, even just the core of the software itself. I, you know, I want to be careful. I definitely don't want to go too far off label with anything that, that their in, in, intentions are. But in my day to day, it's definitely made definitely made things easier. Um, the, the one thing that's in there right now that is fantastic. I saw a comment earlier. Somebody said something about uh, making Jelly Bean obsolete. 
Uh, the firmware embedded key uh, puller, uh, part of the, the, the inform screen, that has particularly uh, saved my butt recently, even as, as recently as today. We had a machine, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, the, the, the gruesome, uh, uh, insane uh, things you have to go through when you have a Windows 8 or 8.1 machine and you don't know what it came with and you have to reinstall Windows. Uh, it's, it's, it's usually a guess and test process, uh, unless you're hundred percent sure if you're ever coming to a machine you haven't worked with before, um, you don't know if it's home pro. Uh, so my point is, is that firmware embedded key? Um, if you end up going in legacy or anything like that, you can certainly get your system back up and running very quickly. Um, and there's, there's some other stuff I've used for that as well, as far as, uh, the installations, but uh, without that functionality, I think key pullers are kind of getting scattered nowadays. I mean, wouldn't you say? I, I would agree. Um, I mean, it's it's almost. I feel like it's almost pointless to have a key puller, in, with the exception of the uh, the firmware key, um, only because like w w like Office three sixty five. I'm doing so much Office three sixty five. I don't even need a key. Yeah, and, but. 13 and up you you you're using a microsoft yeah, account there well, are ways to install without a microsoft account it doesn't i haven't dealt with office uh particularly it doesn't show the office keys at present time um but i would say i've juggled key pullers for the last few years i mean i've gone back and forth between uh you know a few of them like i said i'm not going to sit here and, and name them i accidentally already have but um they're not reliable. I mean, as far as my experiences, depending on the mm -hmm. operating system you're running, there's, you know, there's entitlement keys with Windows 10 now. Um, the firmware embedded key is huge if you're in any kind of legacy boot scenario after, you know, a repair. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Just something as simple as checking your host file. When you plug the machine in and that inform screen, it, it shows you your host file right there. You click a button, you're in your host file. All the things that you kind of have to do legwork to do, it kind of tightens it all together into one place, which definitely... Uh, I like it. Yeah, it saves time. I mean, that's there, there, there is a certain level, what they were discussing earlier, where we'll have like a novice tech or an intern. Um, we can just kind of let them go with it, which is really good. Um, it nice. definitely, yeah, it, it kind of leaves you to be the brain surgeon when you're ready to do surgery, using Sherwood's analogy. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it lets you know what, what exactly, at least it points you at the very least, it's, it's got a great compass that keeps you moving in the right direction. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to future updates and I have tons of ideas. I hope everyone else does too, uh, to share with them. Well, well, I gotta say, I haven't played with the tech bench, which explains why my compass is broken. Um, <laughs> so, so I'm really, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing with it. You know, I, I don't think I even realized that this thing existed. I knew that you guys were playing with something and it was like in alpha, you know, a year ago or, or maybe even longer. And I was like, well, I'm not going to use any alpha software. So I'll just put that in the maybe pile for later. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of forgot about it, you know, and then, and then now, you know, here I am a year later and you guys are about to launch this thing and charge money for it. And it's actually not a bad price, you know, 350 in my eyes, uh, not only how, how many licenses doesn't it give me like 25. I mean, that's, that's already cheaper than, than buying 25 licenses and you get the, to use the toolkit. Yeah. It's a 65 ish percent discount on uh, 25 seats of software. You sell 10 of them and you made your money back. That's, that's phenomenal. So I'm, I'm already excited about that. Um, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that it's not going to be free anymore, but, um, you know, that, that price and everything that you guys are including more than makes up for it. Cool. So, um, I, I really appreciate everything. Gene, I appreciate you putting up with, uh, with my, my badgering questions at the end there. Uh, and I'm sure we should probably add the disclaimer that uh, anything that Gene and I said at the end about any other company uh, may or may not have uh, any reflection on the opinions of uh, Sherwood 
Alex or the the, the company Mauer Bites, uh, or 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 it may. Who knows? We we never know. Uh, <laughs> so with with that said, uh, guys, do you have any last little nuggets of wisdom? Yeah, uh, check us out. Please reach out. We we really want to have the conversations with you. And uh, the more I don't talk to all of you, the more disconnected I get. So uh, ping me, text me, uh, Snapchat me, whatever you want to do. If uh, if I'm not around, I'm usually in a local shop here in uh, uh, Santa Clara or Mountain View, California. Uh, and at the end of this, Steve's going to be so uh, so gracious to really rehost these for you. Uh, have the link if you want to engage with us and then we'll have all of our contact information and again really just reach out uh, if you just want to talk shop or maybe you've got some cool stuff going on that we'd love to hear about uh, and uh, look forward to talking to you part one of the video is already done and ready look at that service so so that one's already up and and like ready so to speak on youtube and it'll be up here on patreon in uh, just a moment speaking of patreon um, I am going to take over the screen share here. Um, Please. I just I just want to, to make sure you guys know, one, uh, I spent at most $20 making this awesome new brand for this uh, MSP webinars thing I've been working on for the last few months. Um, I, I really appreciate the support that I've been getting from the IT community. And I can't wait to see what comes over the next, you know, weeks and months and, and even years to come. Um, check out MSP webinars right now, uh, mspwebinars.com. Check it out right now. That is a redirect to my Patreon page. If you go to my Patreon page, you'll see one, uh, all of the past webinars. And two, if you subscribe to be a patron uh, and and that really means you're going to, to promise to give me at least one whole dollar a month, which I, th I think it's safe to say that you guys could probably afford a dollar. Um, other people have, have given more. Nobody has yet given less. Uh, <laughs> however, um, if, if you guys could find it in your hearts to subscribe, you get access to a bunch of bonus material, uh, including that awesome Malware Bites Hero wallpaper. Uh, I, I, I tossed that in there because that is an awesome wallpaper and I feel like everyone should have it. Um, I've also got uh, uh, Facebook ad campaign, Facebook audience, uh, website advertising, uh, privacy policies. I've got tons of stuff in there, even documentation and uh, quoting uh, documents. So check it all out. Uh, thanks so much for attending. And I will see hopefully all of you next Thursday uh, at, uh, I think next Thursday is, I don't remember what next, oh, uh, break fix onboarding for next Thursday. So we're going to talk about um, not managed services. We're going to talk about what happens if someone brings a computer into your shop or if somebody calls you and wants you to, to be the as needed IT guy and instead of doing uh, some type of support agreement, um, you should still have some things in place that, that you that you do. And we're going to talk about the, the type of onboarding that you should do with them. Uh, we're going to create a document and I'm going to give that all to you guys. Mm -hmm. So I, I look forward to seeing you all next week. I, I do hope that you have an awesome week and thanks so much for attending.